All right, section 5.3, inverse functions. So a quick definition, monotonic, a function that is strictly increasing on its entire domain or a function that is strictly, oops, copy and paste, decreasing on its entire domain. So a theorem, if f, if a function is monotonic, then an inverse function exists. So you guys had that worksheet, uh, just a prerequisite, you know, some things that you guys would have studied in previous courses about inverse functions, okay? A function has to be one-to-one -one in order for an inverse to exist. And we looked at it as studying the graphs of functions if a function passed the horizontal line test, meaning a horizontal line only intersects a function in exactly one spot, an inverse function would exist. So when we look at a quadratic, a parabola, a horizontal line would intersect the same function in two different, um, for two different x values. So we had to restrict the domain in order to find the inverse function. Now if we look at the definition of monotonic, it makes sense. This function is decreasing and then increasing on its domain. This function is strictly increasing, therefore an inverse exists. Now we have calculus techniques to enable us to determine if a function is strictly increasing or decreasing. Okay, so a function is increasing, we know if its derivative is positive. A function is decreasing if its derivative is negative. So let's determine the derivative for each of these. 3x squared plus 1. Attempting to find critical numbers. The domain of the derivative is all real numbers. If we set the derivative equal to 0 and attempt to solve for x, we would get a non-real solution. So the derivative is strictly positive. Therefore, f of x is increasing on the entire domain, and we would say an inverse, I'll use the notation, exists. All right, number two, the derivative of this function, power rule, 3x squared minus 1, same domain, all real numbers, so the derivative always exists. Setting the derivative equal to 0 and solving for x. Oops. We get two critical numbers, plus or minus the square root of one third. Throwing those values on a number line, negative root three over three, positive root three over three. Testing values in between, we would see that the derivative is positive to the left of negative root three over three negative in between the two critical values, and then positive again after square root of 3 over 3. So f is not monotonic. It's not strictly increasing or decreasing. And therefore, an inverse function does not exist on the entire domain. <coughs> OK. So now let's look at the derivative. Let f be a differentiable function with an inverse function g. So f is differentiable and an inverse exists. So we're saying the inverse function, we're going to call that as g, and that just helps with the negative 1, the prime notation. Then the derivative of the inverse function is 1 over f prime of g of x. Now, Let's look at where this is derived from. So again, from the prereq, proving two functions are inverses is a composition. So if I say f of g of x has to equal x, let me ask you to derive this. So using the chain rule, work from the outside in. f prime of g of x times g prime of x Right, the derivative of the inside equals 1. The derivative of x is 1. Solving this equation for g prime of x, so that's where that's a very simple proof of this where this derivative would come from. 
We're saying g is the inverse of f. That's given in the theorem. So this statement has to be true. That's how we would use composition of functions to prove two functions were inverses of each other. So then deriving it using the chain rule, we can see where this um, expression comes from. All right, so we're going to do a few examples. Verify that an inverse exists, first of all. If the inverse exists, find the derivative of the inverse at the given value of a. So for each of these, I am going to say, again, just for notation's sake, if the inverse exists, we're going to call it g of x. f of x equals x plus 6 divided by x minus 2. x is bigger than 2. We have to be given that domain. And we're going to say a is equal to 3. So first, verify that the inverse exists. So let's find the derivative. Using the quotient rule, bottom times the derivative of the top minus top times the derivative of the bottom all over bottom squared. So we have x minus 2 minus x plus 6 all over x minus 2 quantity squared. The x's cancel and we get positive 4 over x minus 2 squared. Oh. This is a plus, which makes this a minus 6, which makes this a negative 8. Sorry about that. So my derivative, we don't even need to find critical numbers. The denominator is always positive. The numerator is always negative. So f prime of x is strictly negative. Therefore, my function is decreasing. And an inverse exists. So now we can move on to the part B. <coughs> okay, so the directions. Determine the derivative of the inverse at the value of A given. So for part B, we want to find G prime of 3. Alright, G prime of 3 would equal 1 over F prime of G of 3. Okay, that's using the theorem. Now this is the tricky part. Where does g of 3 come from? Okay, We have our function, x plus 6 over x minus 2. But we're not asked to find the derivative or the inverse. You're just asked to find the derivative of the inverse function. So using those properties of inverse functions, if f of x equals 3, then g of 3 has to equal x. Okay, so what's the property of inverses? X and Y switch. So if the point X comma 3 is on F, then the point 3 comma X has to be on the graph of the inverse function. All right, so let's start here. Set F of X equal to 3. And solve this for X. So cross multiplying and distributing, 3x minus 6, 12 is equal to 2x, so 6 is equal to x. So using this property, I know f of 6 equals 3, then on the inverse function, g of 3 equals 6. I need that in order to evaluate the derivative. Okay, so g prime of 3 is equal to the reciprocal 1 over f prime of 6. Okay, we know what f prime is equal to. We found that on the previous slide in order to determine that the inverse existed. So f prime of 6 is equal to negative 8 over 6 minus 2 squared. So negative 8 over 16. Now look at what this says. 1 over just means take the reciprocal. So what's the reciprocal of negative 1 half? Negative 2. And this would be our final answer. Alright, let's look at a trig example. 
f of x equals sine of x. Now with trig, we have to restrict the domain because trig functions are not one-to-one. -one. All right, so A, let's determine that the function, that the sine of x is monotonic on this interval. Derivative of sine is positive cosine. Cosine equals zero between negative pi over two and pi over two at those values. So looking at a number line between negative pi over two and pi over two, think of where we are in the unit circle. We're in quadrants one and four, right? Negative pi over two to pi over two. And in these two quadrants, the cosine is strictly positive. Alright, so therefore f is increasing on the given domain, these would be solved, and an inverse function exists. Since an inverse exists, now we want to find the derivative of, of the inverse at one half. So we want g prime of one half. So from the theorem, okay, so if f of x equals a half, then g of a half equals, this is what we have to find in order to plug it into our equation. So set the original function, sine of x is equal to a half. Now remember, we're looking at a specific domain. So between negative pi over two and pi over two, the sine is equal to positive half at pi over six. Now we have this answer. If f of pi over six is equal to a half, then g of a half is equal to pi over six. That's a property of inverse functions. So using our theorem, g prime of a half is equal to one over f prime of pi over six. We know that our derivative function is cosine of x. So the cosine of pi over six is square root of three over two. The reciprocal of square root of three over two would be two over root three. You can leave your answer like this if you want to rationalize the denominator, two root three over three. Either one of those would be acceptable. All right. For homework, find the derivative at the given point. x equals y cubed minus 7y squared plus 2 at the point negative 4 comma 1. All right, so you'll need implicit to do this. So for homework, evaluate the derivative of this function at the point negative 4, 1.